In this lesson, we're going to go over how to read a performance chart for a sprinkler head. Now, uh, we're going to be talking about rotors, but the exact same thing applies to spray heads and spray nozzles. It's just the uh, we're looking at the performance chart here. And with every rotor comes a nozzle tree. Now, we're going to be talking about the Toro T5 rotor, but I just grabbed off the truck here a nozzle tree for a Rainbird product. I didn't have one with me for the Toro head, but exactly the same thing. And what a nozzle tree is, is a selection of different nozzles that you can install into the head to get different flows, different patterns, and different radiuses. The radius is how far away from the head that the water is spraying in its pattern. And um, we'll look here at the... Toro T5 performance chart and what you'll see is eight nozzles here that are just a regular performance. We see just to the right of that the metric values for that and then to the right of that we see four low angle nozzles. And a generally uh, a regular nozzle pattern has an upward arc that goes up and out but sometimes maybe if you're uh, installing a head on top of a hill you don't want that pattern to go straight up when it would really be better for that water to kind of follow the landscape down and not get blown off target so that's what your low angle nozzles are for and so each one of these is labeled by a number that's a close approximation to the flow but it's not necessarily the exact flow that you're going to be getting out of the head that responds to the amount of pressure going through the head. Now, if you remember your water hydraulics course, you'll remember that pressure and flow are tied together. As pressure goes up, so does the flow because there's the pressure is pushing more water through the pipe at a faster rate, so you get a higher flow. But at the head, you also get a further radius. So we're going to select our nozzle on how far we want our water to go and how much water the precipitation rate that we want in that particular head because we're going to need to match these up to the other ones around it to make sure we're getting an even precipitation rate. Okay so as we look at this nozzle tree we have the the eight regular nozzles and let's look at the 1.5 so if we look at the crop here, our 1.5, <clears throat> as we go from left to right, with the 1.5 is the nozzle size, and then we see the pressure. We see the pressure from the lowest rated of the head, that basically you don't want to go any lower than this up to 65, and I consider 65 to be a little bit on the high end. You probably want to regulate that down to maybe 40 or 45 PSI just for optimum performance. Um, but look to one step to the right, and there we see the radius. And you can see as the pressure goes up, so does the radius. So we're getting up to 36 feet out of this head here at 65 PSI. And if we go one more column to the right, we're looking at the flow. And we see a flow range here of 1.15 up to 1.88. So that verifies my earlier statement saying that the nozzle size doesn't necessarily give you the exact flow that you're getting out of that head. The flow depends on the pressure. So, But it does get you in that range there. So now as we go over to the right, we see our precipitation rates. And that's really what we're here to look at is the precipitation rate in the square pattern and in the triangular pattern. In the next lesson, we're going to go into detail about this, but I just want you to see that the rates are different. The triangular pattern has a higher precipitation rate by almost 20% there. I think it maybe it's around 18%, but it is higher just because of the way that the configuration is. I, I typically don't prefer the triangular method, but there is a time and a place for everything, but we'll talk about that in the next lesson. But one thing I really want you to understand here is that when you look at these numbers on this chart, these all refer to a, a 180 degree pattern, uh, 180 degree pattern on the head. So if you've got this rotor in a, in a 180, which is a half moon, then that's what these numbers are for. But let's say you're going to install this head into a 90 degree pattern. You're going to adjust it down just into a 90 degree. Then you're going to have to multiply these numbers by two because that head is covering the ground twice as much as a 180 degree pattern head is. And so also if you're going to be putting this head into a 360 degree pattern, you would take these numbers and divide by two because by the time a 180 degree head goes back and forth, the 360 has only made it halfway around. So it's half the numbers for a 360, but twice the numbers for a 90 degree pattern. So hope that helps.